around Not in my house I have every clock is different is that a new song no it's good though yeah, so different vibes for rage uh, good morning, 6.53. Hey, Jay, yeah, what's up? I would like to see Rachel Estevez versus Sabrina in a battle rap. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and that, would, that would be highly entertaining of it. Ooh, and honestly, I, 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 I've How about seen... instead of versus, how about a collab, Jay? That would be cool. No, but I've, see, I've seen Brie Freestyle and everything like that. She's quite good. No, you haven't. <laughs> Brie, don't be shy. It's cool. Um, Brie got bars, oh guys. God. No, get, get a couple beers in her and everything like that. She goes... My crew uh, no, no, had no, no, my no. back because I was in the queue fact. No, 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 we don't. No, 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 no couple of years, bro. Uh, good morning, 654. I bet Daphne Shimizu can uh, rap. I'm sure. <laughs> Unmute. Wait, where is she? We were. Okay. <laughs> well, remember, we were like the raw bass, like the original kind of rap. Right about now. <laughs> so, you know, of course, uh, but. Uh, you know, but today I want to talk a little bit about filing season instead okay. of Rob Bass oh. and other uh, but Daph, raps. Talk a con. Daph, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe one time you could do your report in a rap. Just down the line. You think, know, think my about sister it. would, uh, my sister who knows that I really love rap music has told me I should never rap. So I'm going to take her advice on that Don't one. Let, no, 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 no. Don't let your sister do that to you. <laughs> She's trying to hold you down. <laughs> But I do have to say, okay, one, thank you for getting me on really early. It's going to be a long day for us. It is tax filing day. Um, May 17 is the last day to file your, uh, it's the deadline to file your forms 1040. And so if you haven't filed your tax return yet, your individual tax return, you can file your individual tax return today. Our team is gearing up to uh, do our last day of drive through drop off service. So as you know, since January, end of January, when we opened up to the public, we began a drive through drop off service where you could file or you could drop off your 1040s with check payment only or with no payment. And so today will be the last day for that. But instead of doing eight to noon, today we're doing eight to five. And so for those people who have check payments only or who have no payments due with their form 1040, you can go ahead and drive through. And at eight o'clock from eight to five today, we're going to be open to do that. Remember um, that if you are not ready to file your return, please make sure you file an extension. Um, the great thing is, Bree, Jason, Chris, you do not have to come to Revin Tax to file an extension. You can get onto myguamtax.com. You can file an extension with and without payment. So if you're not ready, you don't have your information for whatever reason ready, go ahead and file an extension. And it's very important to file an extension. If you don't file an extension and you don't have a return that's filed, what happens is that you end up having a huge penalty. Um, so make sure that you go ahead and file that return, file that extension if you are not ready to file your return. So again, today is the last day for the drive-through drop-off service. Of course, you can make payment by credit card, um, you know, of course, at the ITC building at the Treasurer of Guam there, or even here in Barragata at the Treasurer of Guam here. So you just are not avail able to avail of the drive-through drop-off service. If you have a credit card payment, you must do that um, again, or a cash payment, you must do those at the Treasurer of Guam. Are you guys anticipating a rush of people to come and uh, uh, file, or have uh, you seen a, a lot of people that have, you know, done so online? Well, we actually have over 5,100 people as of the weekend that filed online, which is great news. And so we're very happy about that. Obviously, that's been something that we've been pushing. And actually, that's a record for us here at Revin Tax. Um, for as long as we have uh, been able been able to accept returns, we've never hit uh, beyond 1,300, I believe. So now we're at over 5,000. So that's great news for us. And of course, people can 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 still continue to file online as long as they qualify. Um, but really, Bree, you're right. We've had a lot of people who have filed their returns already. You know, since um, you know the beginning of this tax filing season, which began on Feb 12. And the reason is because um, you know. Well, of course, there was the uh, the rebate recovery credits that people were filing for. People also want to uh, make sure that they file on time. You know, based on what we saw with uh, with the uh, federal funding that was coming in, they knew it was important to file their returns. And so, you know, um, really, when we received over ten thousand returns on Feb 12, which is the first day of our tax filing season. That's actually a record for us in terms of the number of returns received in any single day. And so that's, you know, that was huge for us. Um, 
You know, I don't have the final count of returns that have been filed with us, but I do know people have been, you know, working to try to file, make sure that they get their returns in for EIP three, and actually even when EIP two was still available to them. So, you know, we're again, doing our best to try to get those payments out. Mm -hmm. Dav, I had a question uh, from uh, on my WhatsApp. Someone had uh, applied online or uh, done vehicle registration online April 4th, still haven't received the tags. Um, but they get their mail in GIGO. Is there any uh, issue with the GIGO Denito post offices having been closed down? And is it possible that stuff was mailed out and, and maybe stuck there? Or do you know anything about that? You know, I haven't heard of anything being stuck at GIGO or Dedido post offices. We do have situations where the mail does get returned and we have an actual drawer of um, those return tags. It's possible that that tag was returned. We do have people who are going to start answering our phones at 8 o'clock, so 635-1840-41 or 7651. If, you're, if you have um, not received your tags, go ahead and um, and go ahead and call us so we can get those out to you or find out where it is um, because if it was April 4 and it's already May 17 you know of course um, it's reasonable to expect that you would have received it by now so if you could call us um, and let us know we'll go ahead and try to identify or locate that tag and so we could get it out to you all right uh, where are we with tax refunds Okay, so as of last week, we actually had um, processed through Feb 23 filings, so that's exciting. So for those people who filed through or had a clean uh, A status return through Feb 23, we, we processed those payments. I believe we did about $8.7 million last week. So those, um, those payments were actually, or checks were actually transmitted to the Treasurer of Guam and uh, should be going out. If they haven't already gone out late last week, um, they should be going out early this week. The Treasurer has been really great at getting out, you know, a lot of these payments. So, you know, to get them out as quickly as possible. I know people are receiving them um, because I also get uh, notes from people and, you know, they let me know that they've received their refund. So Feb 23, if you have a question about your return, um, perhaps you're not sure if um, if you are part of the groups that have been paid out, or maybe you just want to check your status to see, you can always get into myguamtax.com. And there is the, uh, as you remember, Bree and Chris and Jason, we did open up the check my refund tool or that check my refund portal. So you can check the status of your refund. You can check to see the, if there was a check processed, the data was processed, the check amount, and then also the address that it was mailed to. So all of that information you're able to, to receive or to get when you log in. You're also able to see if you're if there is an issue with your return and it wasn't processed, it'll indicate and it'll tell you to contact us. And so, you know, I know that people have actually been checking and been able to check that status and to also remedy um, some of their issues with their returns because they're able to get that information without, you know, of course, receiving a notice. Because although we do send notices out once we process, it does take time to send to get those notices. Dev, how's the operations been going at the the new branch over at um, in Upper Tumon? The DMV. You know, I think it's uh, thank you. I think it's been going very well for the most part. Of course, last week there was a fire in Harmon, and so that fire did cause some issues for our, our branch because um, because of the smoke. The smoke actually had um, the the wind was sh had shifted and had caused the smoke to go ahead that way. So building B and, um, you know, I guess also based on the recommendation of GFD, who's also there, um, we ended up having to close a little bit early on um, one of the days last week, but we were able to open up the following day right away. And of course we did have an influx, but you know, for the most part, we believe it's been pretty successful. When I've gone up there, the lines really haven't, um, even when there is a line, the lines uh, don't stay long, very long. The team is able to make sure that they get through the lines quickly. So, you know, we're very excited. And yes, Bree, you know, as a reminder to our public and to the community, we did open up DPW Building B um, uh, back a, a couple of weeks ago. You, that's where you can do your vehicle registrations. And so, you know what, we are no longer servicing vehicle registration services here at Barragata. It is all down at DPW Building B. Our team has actually been, um, I'll tell you, they're full force. We have rooms one through eight that are fully um, staffed. So we make sure um, we have, you know, two lines for our individuals with disabilities, our Menamco and our veterans. Then we also have a couple of lines because in the month of May, we're finishing out um, those people who had um, 
who had appointments were finishing appointments out. And then we have the remaining uh, remaining uh, sorry lines for the, reg the general public, but we've been able to get through the lines pretty quickly. Um, we haven't had too many issues again outside of um, last week, of course, because there was the fire in Harmon caused a little bit of a operational issue, but we were up and running the following day right away. Mm -hmm. Um, what would you uh, tell people that, you know, you, you often say uh, you can check uh, the status of your stimulus and, and things like that on guamtax.com. What if they're not mm -hmm. able to access um, the their information sure. there? If you're not able to access, well, a few things when, um, well, you know what we did here at our GRT branch is we set up a couple of computers for those people who are not, who don't have access to a computer, who are not able to log in to either set up an account, don't know how to, or to file their, um, file their returns. We have a few computers that are set up at GRT for that. If you're not able to log in online, um, you know, the great thing is if you have a smartphone, and I know a lot of people do have smartphones, you have a smartphone, you can actually do it from your phone. Um, if you're not able to, though, we do have a couple of computers they're meant for GRT. Something though, Sabrina, that we did um, do is we did reach out to the, our public library. And if you didn't know, our public library does have, um, they do have some computers. In addition to the computers, they actually have, um, they're able to pr uh, have you print things there. So not only can you get online at the, our public library, you can also get, on, um, get online and print documents if there is a need to. And so we've been in communication with Melvin, um, Melvin Wampat Borja, who is now um, currently in charge of the library and um, he has you know absolutely been super supportive of our efforts and so if you have an issue of course our public libraries um the Agania library i think in particular was where our team met um met some of the uh, library uh, team members and they do have um, there is access to computers there at the public libraries mm -hmm. but again you can always get onto a smartphone and you can go ahead and check status you can um, so you don't have to worry about it being an actual computer. Um, I know that uh, there is a move to try to also assist people with, you know, Wi-Fi and other things like that to be able to access. But again, I think, you know, between uh, smartphones, our public library, and then also, you know, again, if you really need to and you're not able to get online, um, we do have a couple of computers that are really primarily for GRT use, but of course, which we absolutely can open up if people have an issue and need to access something. By any chance, are you aware uh, if we've received uh, any of the ARP money yet? The, fr the 543 or wh whatever the new amount was? You know, um, I know we, we did meet with uh, Director Byrne last week, but perhaps he's the better one to speak uh, on with about that because he's been monitoring our okay. bank accounts mm -hmm. over the last several months to make sure that we have got or are able to get that money. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure uh, if the monies were received. Um, I know we were expecting them. Um, but um, that's something that Director Byrne will definitely yeah. have information on. What What is your reaction then? You know, the legislature, they, they uh, turned in their spending priorities plan, submitted it to the governor, and they did allocate $10 million for uh, the Department of Revenue and Taxation to kind of support uh, some of the progress and automating uh, various services uh, for your agency. But during the press conference he held last week, it, DRT uh, was one of the... Um, funding allocations that he kind of identified that it wouldn't necessarily fit in to the U.S. Treasury uh, guidance. Sure. And you know what? I know that um, there was like a 151 page document or guidance which was provided with regards to the, the use of or what's allowed to be used, um, you know, the ARPs um, allowed usage. Um, of course, those are things that we'll have to continue to talk about and discuss. You know, we're very grateful to the governor and lieutenant governor for their continued support and also the legislature. Um, and, and I think that it's really, um, you know, great. Um, you know, of course, I am a big advocate of collaboration and I talk about how, you know, one plus one doesn't have to equal two, one plus one can equal 10 or 100. And, and I believe that, you know, the meeting with governor and, of course, um, and with the legislature is a huge step toward you know, really helping us to, you know, continue to help our people. And I think it really, you know, shows the um, the commitment that our governor, lieutenant governor, and also, um, and also our legislature have to try to move forward. So, you know, although perhaps the use of the funds may not 
perhaps fit exactly within what's allowable, um, at least for the DRT side. I'm confident that the governor, the lieutenant governor, and the legislature will work to um, help to find the funding for us. Uh, of course, our oversight chair and other members of the legislature have reached out to pledge their support for our agency. They recognize that we have a huge mandate and, you know, of course, to try to get monies to our people, that has been huge for us. So, you know, again, um, I'm confident that even if the, the guidelines don't allow for us to be able to avail of the monies that, you know, that we will be able to avail of or get some additional support in some in some manner. And of course, we always, as as usual, Bree and Jason and Chris, we just do our best to try to, um, you know, to make do with what we are able, what we have, and to be as resourceful as we can be. And, and again, that's, you know, at the end of the day, that's what we, that's what we have to do. And um, we're going to continue to do that. That's what we've been doing over these last two and a half years. And, um, and most especially through COVID. Right. You know, um, so you're doing away with the uh, drive through uh, as after today, where, where are you guys t kind of uh, at coming a little bit closer to normalcy in terms of accepting, you know, just, just walk-ins and n not having to have uh, appointments? Absolutely. So, you know what, starting tomorrow, as you mentioned, drive through drop off service will be ending. There will be no more drive through drop off service after today. And that's, of course, part of our efforts to get back to some level of normalcy where people will be able to come in. We believe we've been able to uh, address a lot of the uh, the huge demand for filing. Um, again, because we've been out there for several months now, um, again, just, you know, doing the drive through service. But we believe that this that, again, this is part of our um, our gradual movement towards some level of normalcy. And so people can just continue, just can just kind of come in and, and begin to walk in. And um, for the most part, um, you know, people have been able to walk in. I think the number one area where we've had a huge issue, of course, is driver's license. We have driver's license um, appointments coming, going into 2022. Our team is working to try to address that issue. Um, one of our large efforts and initiatives, as I mentioned before, is the modernization effort on that side where we're going to be moving toward an online system of, of, of uh, being able to renew or replace driver's licenses, including in some cases, real ID compliant licenses and Guam IDs. And that's exciting for us. That's something that our driver's license, our acting driver's license supervisor has been working on. And of course, several members of our team have been working on with our programmers. So, you know, before the end of this year, that's our target. And so that we can get that going. Um, I do want to say, though, that we did, of course, receive word from U.S. Homeland Security on that kind of to pivot off of the driver's license issue. We did uh, receive a notification that the real ID deadline has actually been further extended to 2023. So I know a lot of people were concerned about having to get a real ID before October 1, 2021, because that was the original extended deadline. U.S. Homeland Security further extended that through 2023. And so, you know, for those individuals who are going to be traveling, of course, you know, please check TSA and check the uh, airlines. But, um, you know, my understanding is that um, at least, um, you know, of course, flying through Hawaii and then in the continental United States that, you know, there should not be an issue, uh, at least until the real ID deadline is uh, uh, applies. And again, that will be until 2023. Mm -hmm. And just just but well before then, sorry, but well before then, Brie, we will have our online renewals and replacements of even again, real, if you have a real ID compliant Guam driver's, Guam driver's license or a real ID compliant Guam ID, as long as all of your documents are um, valid in our system, then you will be able to uh, renew or replace it online. And th that is huge for us. We have been waiting for this and we're very excited to get to launch that this year. Awesome. Uh, just one final question from one of our viewers. Uh, do you have an update on rebate recovery? On the rebate recovery credits, actually, so Bree and, and, and Jason and Chris, how it works for the rebate recovery credits. For those individuals that have been filing their returns, um, we have been, and, and we, for the, that we've been paying refunds out for. So if you have filed and have an A status return as of Feb 23, um, it's highly possible that you could have already received your rebate recovery credit if you were due one. So as we've been going along and paying refunds, we've also been paying those RRCs. And we wanted to make sure, so as, our, as part of our efforts to pay out refunds quickly, 
we also wanted to make sure we paid out those rebate recovery credits quickly. And so those are going out the same time as refunds. And so your rebate recovery credit will be on the same check as your refund. There is not two separate checks. And so, you know, if you get a refund and you also do a rebate recovery credit, you should have that, have that amount also in your, um, uh, in your refund check uh, that you receive or your deposit because people are receiving by direct deposit. Sorry, I just had one last uh, question. It's actually a tip I got over the weekend. That uh, un under what circumstances? Because I know everybody gets a stimulus, but do do people who are serving prison terms also get a stimulus? Yes, and so for those, of course, if you recall back in EIP one, there and when we had first done our implementation plan for EIP one, there was discussion about incarcerated individuals, and we had advised, and that is of course based on our on our implementation plan and the direction from the uh, IRS and the Treasury that incarcerated individuals were not eligible for EIP one. Later, I believe back in September 2020, well, because there was a court case, and because the um, if you want to call it the judgment was that. Um, a, a, that the IRS was to pay incarcerated individuals. And so, you know, uh, that is why, if you recall, that non-filer form, the original mm. deadline for the non-filer form was actually October 15. It ended up being moved to November, I believe November 21. And that had largely to do with, of course, the um, issue of incarcerated individuals and making sure that those people who initially thought that they may not be eligible were eligible. And so again, we had clarified that back in um, late, or maybe the last quarter of 2020. And we worked to make sure, of course, that uh, individuals at that um, the financial institutions, you know, of course, are aware of that and that we had uh, pressed that out. But for EIPs one, two, and three, um, the and of course now the rebate recovery credit, uh, anybody who uh, you know individuals, as long as they're otherwise eligible, meaning they meet the income limits, the residency requirements, etc. If you were incarcerated, also you were eligible as long again as you met all other eligibility requirements. Okay, I didn't know that. Interesting. Yeah. I, yeah, because I actually had a call from somebody who was going to drop a stimulus check to DOC so it could be signed and then they could go cash it. And I was like, wait a second. <laughs> oh, it's, it's all normal. Right. Right on. Right. No, I mean, and again, that was a big case. If you uh, if you kind of uh, go back to some of the national news back mm. last year, it was a huge issue. There was wow. class action suits. And so, you know, again, the judgment was that uh, or the final uh I guess decision was that incarcerated individuals also are eligible and so yes you know uh, eip1 eip2 eip3 and also the rebate recovery credits thank you daphne thank you all right no thank you so much again um hope to see uh everyone out here yeah. at eight to five if you haven't filed your return and if you have not filed your return and are not ready please file an extension so that you can make sure that you avoid any penalties because the penalties are very high for failure to file and failure to pay so if you're not ready today please file that extension you can file it online and again thank you so much Bree, chris and jason for having me on this morning have a great day have a great day guam and have a great tax day everybody thank you Daph. all right uh thank really you. quick break and we're coming back with lillian posadas of the guam memorial hospital next on the link good morning uno go